today we're gonna highlight the green anaconda. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. You guys seen our great series in Australia. We came back and did a quick little video of our Water Dragon Komodo Island tour with our guests, but now we are in our reptile house. But today we're not gonna do a full video. We're gonna highlight just the giants, okay? And in particular, the green anaconda, my favorite snake on the planet, all right? I have a big one and a couple small and medium ones in between. So we're gonna go feed them, we'll feed some of them, feed our big retic and see our babies. Let's go. All right guys, so our first one up, we're gonna feed our biggest retic first. But why are we doing that? When I got her in, she was big, she was fat, she was heavy, and I paired her with a male and she bred. And she gave me eggs. As soon as I got back home from Australia, I woke up the next morning and she dropped 52 eggs. Check it out. Eggs. How sick is that? So it's been about two months. The eggs have been incubated for 60 days. It is insane. My first clutch of retic eggs. I'm so excited. My girl just started eating. You know, you guys know when it retakes fat, bunch of eggs mating, they both the male and the female go off of food. So I separate everybody and now she's by herself for about a couple weeks and she's ready to eat. How do I know? I gave her a couple small rats, large rats, but to her they're small. She devoured them. But I did go to the store, the reptile shop, and I got some big, massive pigs just for big snakes. Now they're already dead, so viewer discretion is advised. They do look like they've been alive, but I just defrosted them. So before we get our pigs, let's check our girl out. By the way, big shout out to Custom Cages. You guys know I got these foppers hooked up. There's big 250 watt bulbs in there. There's heating pads on the bottom. There's rock shelves on the back. One of my favorite habitats I have here at the reptile house. So we're gonna see our girl. We'll unlock her door. We're gonna slide this out and come right in. Look there, guys. Now it's nice and foggy in here. I got that humidity going. It's, oh, she, she's on to me. All right, now that she's fully back on herself, so you gotta be careful in here because you don't wanna get tagged by this snake. You don't, as Ricky Mack would say, you don't want that thing hanging off you. <laughs> and she's not a small girl. Look at her back there in the corner. Yeah, she's ready to eat. So I'm gonna go grab that pig and uh, we're gonna get to work, guys. Oh, going in. Wish me luck. She's onto it. Oh, she's on it. Don't you bite me. Oh, she's like, I'm not interested in that. I don't know what that is, Dad. Well, that was anticlimactic. Well, the good thing is, I have lots of big sinks. So we'll see. One of our other kids wants it real quick. Since she's not gonna eat, I wanna offer her husband this pig. And he's been on food for a few weeks as well. Actually, a few months. And uh, we'll see how he's feeling today. There he goes. So I'm gonna leave him right there. He just grabbed it so slow. A couple of snakes do that. He's one of them. There's a lot of snakes I won't get that close to because they just grab me and wrap me up and I don't wanna get bit. This gonna be the response. 
Right, you guys want to know something cool. Snakes are eating, right? And on top of their jaws, they have these rows of teeth that are moving the opposite. So one moving here like that, and it's pulling it back. And this one shooting over there, and it's pulling it back. And that's how they're able to keep constantly grabbing that pig and moving it down their throat. Their little tube down there is breathing for them so they can breathe because their whole esophagus is clogged up. So it's cool to see them constantly inch by inch. Their teeth are just like this actually, so it's inch by inch. See them going side to side? You're just gripping that pig, gripping that pig. All right, so now we're gonna be walking. I want you guys to look at it in my habitat. I want you guys to see and spoil it for our next episode of our full reptile tour. But for now, we're gonna see our baby anacondas. They're not babies, they're like, kind of sort of a little bit bigger than the other ones. Got these back there. Now this guy is our young male. Now you guys do know, when you're kind of breed, they go in a big old mating bowl. And they, uh, slide that up there. It's got that olive green color. Vic is going to shed right now. He is really, really biting. I'm gonna take him out nice and slow. Look at this guy. Our male green anaconda. He is a beauty. I'm sure he's gonna bite me in the stomach or something. When his skin gets all wrinkly like that, He's in like literally getting ready to shed any second now. I'm sure if I reach my hand down there and peel that off, those pieces of skin will just come right off and it'll be actually more pretty. So I'm gonna let this guy soak in our tub over here. He's doing pretty good today. And maybe with him being inside of here. Now I got this big tub for the kids that have a little bit of enrichment. They have all water sources, but this one can be a little bit bigger for them. That guy is fast. <laughs> I love that snake, man. He's moving so fast, his skin's coming. Look at that. His, his skin is shedding as he's moving. Maybe I can get a hold of him and help him shed that skin. The males always tend to look a little better than the females, but they don't get as big. Males can max out around like uh, like 13 feet, 12 feet. You know, that's a big, that's a huge male. You guys know females get easily up to 19, 20 feet. They say they get 30 feet, but nobody sees them any big anacondas. I think the last biggest one was caught out of French Guyana. Uh, it was imported in 1957. I got a photo of it. I'll show you guys right here. And uh, these guys caught this snake 25 feet long. It was like 400, 350 pounds, somewhere around that range. But yeah, man, this is, a, this is just a baby where they get massive. They're, when they're born, they come out already two feet long. Look at this guy. Trying his best to get out of this water. He is pissed right now. Maybe I can get, look at that shit. Turn the rag off. It actually, it's actually helping him. He's jamming himself up in there. Well, you can't fit in there, kid. You can't fit in this little crack. But at least this little soak helps him shed off a little bit. Now, I don't suggest you guys go try to peel your snake because they shed on their own. But when you can give a little help of hand like this, I guess, you know, it goes a long way. You got that full piece coming off at the same time. And that belly is like orangish, you know? It's like orange, like amber color, almost red. I say this guy is just phenomenal. Look at that, he's coming right off. 
I'll we'll go back to the top, like I said. Wow. We got a good little grip on this, on this end piece. Now I think we can get it all off at the same time. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. Satisfying, huh? As a kid, I did this my whole life, just hanging out with my snakes and helping them shed after a nice soak. Look at that. Fresh skin, baby. New skin, who this? New skin, who this? Nice and slow. Like I'm barely, barely, I'm just holding it, holding it nice and soft. It's coming right off. It's a great sign of a healthy snake. Let me shed that full piece. Look, even this little bum, little sperm plug come out. Look at that, that's a sperm plug. And we're off. Not a full piece, but that's a good little shed right there. Happy to help your pal. He's got some more up there. So uh, we'll uh, put him some hands, even though he doesn't have any hands. <laughs> and now we're gonna move on to our other small one. We're gonna get our yellow girl. Let's go. If you guys want to come down here, I'm pretty sure you're thinking, why is that cage having double light? It actually does. If you guys look over here, there is a black light in there and also a heat panel right here. So, ample amount of heat in here, nice and humid. Also, she's in shed too. Hi, baby. You come out. She's usually sweet, but she can't see right now, so probably a little freaked out. She's in a full blue stage. Look at her. Look at those eyes, nice and milky. What a species, huh? You got a little anaconda. If you guys look behind you on the wall up there, I have a giant photo of a big adult female green. It's a bar at my hotel house. Now I'll take you guys over and show you the difference between the yellow and the green side by side. So I'll let her go for a little dip. Maybe she'll get a head start on her little shed process. Look at her go, so fast. Now, the yellow anacons are more aquatic than the green ones. As you can tell, she's swimming a whole lot faster. New environment, warm water, just Take it off. She thinks she's in deep water. That's why she's taking off like that. Can't see, you know. It's like, what is going on? I'm out of here, Dad. So now she's right there. This would be a great time to. Now this guy really lodged himself up in there, huh? Don't you bite me. I'm trying to get your cousin out of here. It's perfect that she actually swam right over here. The difference between a yellow and a green. Now they can hybridize. Um, usually these are from different territories, but they also share the same territories. They're in the Amazon rainforest. Some just come from Venezuela, Caracas, you know. They come from Peru, uh, Brazil, Colombia. These guys are all over the Amazon. Wherever the Amazon touches, and the conifer found. So you also find these guys in Suriname, in Guyana. And they all look different, man. I think there's also a new subspecies of anaconda out there. So I saw a little report on it on, uh, on Fauna Classifieds. They made a new discovery of anaconda species, but they think it's just these two hybridizing so many times over and over. It's just sharing the same territory, you know? A couple of guys in captivity have bred and crossbred these, you know? So it's, uh, it's really cool to see the, the yellow anaconda yellow, but the circling of the green anaconda inside of it and it has almost half the length. We haven't seen any adults, we've just seen some juveniles and babies, so it will be cool to see what they look like as full grown adults. I hear that the, the yellow anacondas get about 13 feet. Um, there's a guy actually selling a, a, a big group of these guys, um, and uh, he has them posted at 13 feet, 11 feet, and I'm like, man, I've never seen you know, a yellow anaconda that big, so they're pretty old specimens. Yeah, it's, it's a good, great side-by-side -side reference of the green versus the yellow. 
So guys, to come into detail with a quick close-up, two animals basically the same, even though they're different type of species. This green anaconda has green in between with the separated oscillation. So you see the circles? They don't ever touch. Sometimes they do touch because every snake has different patterning, like right there will kind of blotch in between, but here separated, here separated, all separated. Whereas this girl, she's yellow in between. She has these co-joined blotches all along her back. That jaguar stripe pattern on top of the head because they also share the same territory with jaguars. Actually, baby jaguar food has been documented to be baby and young anacondas. Quick catch, they both share the territory. These guys eat capybara, they eat uh, uh, big uh, Amazon river otters, they eat fish, they eat anything they can catch, iguanas. Sometimes they even seem eating their own kind. Now, the cool thing about greens is they get massive. And the big females put out their pheromones during breeding season and all the males, they go in this big, huge mating ball. I'm talking sometimes over a hundred snakes are together battling to get the buns of the biggest female anaconda. <laughs> so sick, right? Your yellow and your green. There go. This one is the meanest snake I have outside of my other scrub python. Um, so this one will be handled with extreme caution. So um, usually I don't mind getting bit by snakes, but this one is about, I don't know, maybe 11, 12 feet. You don't want this thing hanging off you. When they're in the water, it makes it a little worse. They're much faster as you guys see them moving around and that's their territory. They live in the water, they're semi-aquatic animals. So they feel they can stick that little nose up right above the water's edge. Something comes down like a, like a tapir or a capybara or a little spider monkey. And you know, whack that thing, and pull it in the water, wrap it up. Which you guys hopefully will see later with our big girl. She likes to grab her food and throw it in the water, choke it, drown it. Swallow it, even underwater, it's so dope. I fed her outside of her water bowl before while she was fully on the freaking ground and she scooted her butt all the way back into the water and dragged her pig in there and then wrapped it up again, and then ate it. It's so dope, man. Now the, the crazy part is just like a crocodile, these guys can strike at you from underwater. It is nuts how much they can see and how good they can see. But when you live somewhere like the Amazon or jaguars, and, Harpy eagles and piranhas and caiman are out to get you and eat you. You gotta be ready to go at all times. So, yeah, uh, I see her head back there. We're gonna give her a go. I don't want to just, oh, see, I even touched it. She jumps up a little bit. <laughs> this one's due for a hook. Her head is right there. She moved it nice and slow. I started touching her. There she comes. See, she's not a small snake at all. She ain't gonna wanna come out without a fight either. So I'll we'll try to get that one to roll up. That body position, I can grab her. Again, she's a little bigger than a, a male. Not bigger than a other female. She's not a heavy camper, I tell you. She's also going through shed. I mean, all shedding at the same time. Nice and slow. Bring this girl up. Look at her. Nice size female. There she goes. Again, easily about 12 foot. Maybe 11 foot. Uh, look at her in this water over here. And there she goes. So you have a small, a medium, a large, and now after she's in here hanging out for a little bit, you guys can see the size difference. Small medium, I call that large, but we get a double XL coming soon. 
good looking snake, huh? Nice and thick. Also going through shed, so she's a, a little milky. That's a girl right there. Look at the difference between how light this is and how dark she is. Even though she's in shed, she won't be that light at all. Perfect example, side by side. She's trying to wedge her way through there. She ain't gonna make it. But they all like this little crevice. Her out too much. I'm gonna get her back in her habitat. Wanted to show you guys our anaconda update. We're not finished yet. We got the beast to go see. She's a lot more nicer than her. Boom, just like that, she's back in the house. Now she needs a lock because yesterday she got out. Check it out. Now she needs a lock because yesterday she, yeah, locks. <laughs> Man, anacondas just do something to me, dude. All right, guys. So now we're gonna move on to the double XL XXL green anaconda. My app, Unectus marinus from the Amazon. Quick fact, okay? There is a guy in Germany. I don't know his exact name, but look at this photo. He has the biggest anaconda in captivity out of anybody. He's documented these snakes not eating for three and a half years, still pooping, still shedding. If that's not a dinosaur, I don't know what is. Only I know like lobsters or crocodiles can go that long without actually consuming a meal and they're active. Now, if these animals are almost semi-aquatic, they're kind of sort of buoyant all the time so they can reserve their energy. If they're big and they have everything to eat in the most, bio, the most biodiverse part of the rainforest, they have all that fat to burn. So even if something goes wrong like a meteor and everything's dead, they can survive a long time without food. I know they're probably not dinosaurs, but to me as a kid, that my inner kid, this snake's a dinosaur. Let's check it out. It's nice and toasty in here. My girl's all the way in the back. How are you? You okay? Twenty pounds, fourteen feet long, a puppy of a mega serpent dinosaur. Oh man, this is a big snake. Heavy as can be. Now she is sweet. She's fourteen years old. She's bred a few times. I don't trust her around my face because if she did try to bite, 
This snake's so big, nothing I can do about it. I'm dead. But I trust her. I'm giving her my trust. And uh, she's heavy, man. I'm deep breathing. Uh, I work out for moments like this, you know? Like all these giant snakes. <laughs> I actually brung her to uh, a birthday party this past weekend with uh, Sierra, Russell Wilson, and Kobe Bryant's wife, Vanessa Bryant, the Queen Mamba. And she did great. This is Eve, my female adult, green anaconda. Now, they can get another 10 feet bigger than this. She's 120 pounds, but they average in the wild 350 to 400 pounds. The documentation is 30 feet, 500 pounds, but I don't personally believe that's any, any, any modern era right now. But a beast of a snake. I mean, you guys saw them small, this medium, the large. This is a double XL. They get four XLs. <laughs> so yeah, man. This is my baby. Her name is Eve. She is a big one. I know Brian Barczyk and a couple other guys like Kevin McCurley have their anacondas. And it's been a dream to have mine. I've had anacondas back in the day. As you guys know, that's how I got started on social media. But I mean, guys, look at this snake. Dude, look at that. That is a big animal. Oh my God. She's not small, guys. She is not small. She is a mega beast. My favorite species to work with. So strong, so deadly. I mean, this thing can kill me easily. And I love every bit of it. Look at her. My baby. Now, if you guys are in South Florida, there's a big crazy thing going on where these guys are showing up FWC and they're killing people's pets, you know? That's one of the main reasons why I left Florida because I didn't want to deal with that. Uh, it's heartbreaking to have someone, imagine having a snake 14 years and then you have permits for it and all that stuff. And they come to your house and say, hey, it's actually legal now. And take it, they start pulling your, your, your animals, your kids, things you have bonds with, things you feed, things are sweet. And they start killing them with nail guns. Bro, I'd be, I'd be probably in jail, you know? I wouldn't be able to deal with that. So we're gonna put her back, give her some love for a little bit, but now I changed her water. It's nice and warm. I think she's gonna love it. She's gonna go inside there and chill for a bit. But I mean, guys, I got this tattoo a long time ago. I'm still working on it, but it's cool to be able to show my love for anacondas on my leg from my ankle all the way to my thigh. I'm not finished yet, but this, this is the game plan. The mother of all snakes, my most dedicated, longest tattoo I've ever had to this beast right here. I just love her, man. She makes me happy. It's, it's a blessing to be able to share space with such a creature, such a dinosaur, man. Um, I do have a lot of monitors and raptors and stuff like that, but that right there is a savage of an animal. The only animal recorded to go toe to toe with jaguars. The baddest cat on the planet. Sick, bro. Let's feed this pig, let's go. All right, guys, this is the grand finale. Let's see if she's ready to eat. So heavy. Mm -hmm. Well, she's an anaconda, so I guess I just leave the pig in the water. I'll come back and check it later. Yeah, she's eating. I'll give you guys an update. All right, guys, how sick was that? Green anacondas, yellow anacondas, 
retakes, pigs, a big huge fest. And I hope you guys didn't peek around and look at the other habitats because up next is a full on reptile tour. And then after that, we're gonna do a cage by cage feeding of every single animal we have in the reptile house. Another cool fact, the big anaconda you guys just saw, you saw how tame and docile she was. I will be offering a few tours here at the Wild Jungle for you guys to come out and swim with me and a green anaconda in our giant pool over there. You guys are gonna love it. I'm only offering a few limited edition tickets just for the anaconda swim when it's its peak in the summer. I wanna see you guys there. Comment down below who wants to come. Love you guys. Peace.